Hi, my name is Levi. I've invented a printer for cement and cob. It makes houses, it makes walls, it makes boxes, it makes furniture. It can make a patio as well as your table as well as chairs for a house that you 3D print. It's kind of taking 3D printing to the next level. That's why I call it the Leviathan. It's probably the only part of me that'll last because this is gonna be open source. So the designs, the methods, the motors will all be listed clearly, the gantry and the method of uh, 3D printing and using the CNC software that will be Mach 3. All of these will be step by step. So if you're unfamiliar, that's fine. I'll make it so simple, so straightforward that you'll be able with no background, be able to build it. It's a matter of will and patience. That's all I ask for, patience and will. That will be able to make something that can change the life for you, yourself, your family, and your community. That's why it's called the Leviathan. I'm thinking like something that can rise up to challenge the titans of industry. Those companies that for so long have overcharged for contracting fees, have overcharged for cement and basic resources, just trying to put a sink into your bathroom costs more than building this house will be. The main cost will be cement, the metal for the gantry, uh, the motors, and then the electrical wires. And then of course the 3D printing plastic, this is all PETG, um, which has very low emissions uh, as 3D plastics go for printing in inside. Um, and it can be printed on an Ender 3 and Ender 5 or Ender 6 combo or just get an Ender 6, which is four or $500, or an Ender 3 and just maybe purchase for me one or two parts that are large. But the, like for example, the extruder, which is quite massive. But um, beyond that, the goal is to make this open source, to make 3D printing go to the next level where anything is possible, whether it's a house or a building or a garden new, New garden that like drains into another garden that can change gardening by using less water and making more advanced systems of filtration through the beds. It doesn't matter. Anything like making a more porous concrete structure for your sidewalk, which is designed in such a way that it drains better or it makes better grip when it's snowy, like by yeah, its gradation, like, like, or just and encouraging interest in material science and, and learning how to make better mixes of concrete, which is a very, very valuable skill. It's the second most valuable uh, resource in the world to, as to water. So if you know how to make good concrete, like that's an incredibly valuable skill. Just that alone could get you a career. Uh, so none, in science that is. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, if Cobb is more your, your speed, you can build earthen structures using your own land at much lower cost than even concrete. So that then your main cost is just the metal and the wire and the motors. And you can just use your land, your clay, your sand, your soil, and build something that can last hundreds of years. Um, that also insulates well during the winter and during the summer stays cool. Uh, you can build structures for animals that stay outdoors or sheep or cows or horses and horse stalls. You know, all you gotta do is put the wood on for the roof, but you can print out nice walls with even the windows or the feeders built in. Like, my idea is just to simply make this a better, more interactive community not to get super wealthy off this, these printers, these house printers have been around for quite a while, but they've not gotten to the public. And I was thinking about why, and I was looking at the inventors and a lot of them are very smart people, smarter than me, but they have a, a material interest. They have an interest in becoming wealthy. So what that happens is once you build this printer, I could just go to city hall and go, look, I could make your affordable housing for 20% less or 10% less. And that would mean hundreds of millions of dollars in savings for them as I slowly go around with my own company, a team of like 20 people and build that. 
Um, you get what I'm saying? Like that is a very viable uh, interest economically and business wise, but it doesn't help the world. It doesn't make that printing or that industry more common. 3D printed houses more common. All it does is make it in that one city or wherever you can manage your employees before they all break off and make their own company and then they go bankrupt and you go bankrupt because it's hard to get interest and you can't meet the deadlines you made for large contracts. It's just all the red tape that comes with that lifestyle. I'm saying build it in your backyard. Build it within the dimensions you can for uh, the square feet limitations of not needing a permit. Just allows people to build things they need, whether it's storage, or for a relative, or for something that actually impacts an average human. So my idea is to get money off of the kit and selling the parts as a kit and just letting people go and purchase them as they like, or just coming to me and getting them much faster but and perhaps at a better deal, or just making the 3D par printed parts kit available, the full kit available, and just doing tutorials at very low cost, like five bucks, 10 bucks, and say, here's how you can do the 3D printing, here's how you can do the CNC work, here's how you can assemble it, and here's how you can do your first test prints, and here's how you can mix the concrete or cob and put it through the, the, the um, pump. And by the way, this is a little bit more taxing than most of my side projects because it's not only the printer you have to make, it's also the pump, which is over there. Um, which I'm still working on. The only last bit is the sprocket. I did a belt system and it slips whenever it gets too heavy. And of course it's concrete and it's in a confined space. Even at low pressures, it, it makes the belt slip. So I may go to sprocket and that should be done in the next two or three days. I've already tested it. Um, and the goal here is to make life easier for people and to take that stress that most people feel that stress of like housing and the insecurity that comes with maybe your property or your house being taken from you or from your family or being young and not being able to afford it or being old and not being able to afford it or keep it. Just being able to like have it even from natural disasters be wiped out from a flood, which by the way almost happened to us a year ago, um, which is part of the impetus for this project, is the, the land being taken from you by nature and by just the natural, uh, just by the rivers and the oceans themselves and human mismanagement of them. Um, but to just be able to rebuild your house after a storm, to be able to say, hey, next time we do it, I wanna put the kitchen here. Hey, next time we do it, I wanna make the bedrooms a little bit bigger, or I wanna make the, the, the wall between the living room and the kitchen, like this sort of design with like this, this artistic style, or columns that spiral this way instead of that way. You can have that. You can have the total freedom to both design and create without red tape and intervention by so many people that it becomes so god awful expensive and so complicated that the average person just puts their hands off and lets the professionals do it and just ends up losing it, um, which all too often happens. This is not to deride in any way professionals. They have a skill I don't have. They have years and years of experience. What I have is the willingness to try something new. And let's see who else wants to help.